for that reason, we thank him today because to each of us, he is something different, but all at the same time, he remains, he remains the same. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before your presence. Bless now this congregation and speak to us, for we need to hear from you. Teach us that we may be taught. Show us the way and we'll go for you. Give us strength and we'll stand. Bless us, God, as we reflect who you are. Satan, you will not interfere with the word of God, for the word of God shall come forth freely, and there shall be great receptivity. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. God bless you. Yes, thank you. Uh, powerful word in song, let me battles. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Cathedral of Praise Choir and, and the band. We appreciate you all. I want to acknowledge the presence because it was only a few days ago that we spoke to you and said she was in the hospital, but we're thankful that Jean McNeil is in the sanctuary today. God bless you. I have not said much concerning this individual because it was, in my opinion at the time, rather personal, but I've, ex I've seen that it, it is out a little bit. And since it is, we want to thank God for Sister Pamela Dozier and what, what God is doing for you. Amen. We appreciate you. The Lord gave to me an assignment that I have to do every Sunday, and I'm enjoying doing it, and I'm enjoying having you to share with me as we do it. I know that some of you stood on both songs, and then when I got up, you knew it was time to speak, and you stood. But I need you to stand again because we have to read the 91st Psalm. Psalms 91. The Lord says do it in every service, and so we're going to do that. When I count to three, we're going to read together. Now, some of you, it should be on the screen. If you follow the screen and not your phone, we can, we can stay together. I hear people who are looking at their Bibles and their, and, and, and their phones, and they're the ones who get behind. I want, I want you to stay with us. Amen. Thank you so much. One, two, three. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. 
Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou have made the Lord, which is my refuge, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon, because he, therefore, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. We praise the Lord. I'm going to sing, he knows my name. Listen, uh, you may be seated. It did indicate very strongly that we know his name, yeah. we know God's name, yeah. and God is so great for us. But I wanna tell you right now, the Lord knows my name. Yes, he does. Amen. Yeah. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I'm his own. Yeah. He knows my name, hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, you know my name. You know Help us, audience, help us. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. Oh, how you walk with me. How you talk with me. Oh, how you talk with me. Oh, how you tell me. Oh, how you tell me. That I am your own. That I am your own. When I'm going through the worst of my times, I can say, Oh, how you walk with me. And oh, how you talk with me. Oh, how you talk with me. And oh, how you tell me. Oh, how you tell me. Lord, I am your own. And I am your own. Think about every step you take. Oh, how you walk with me. Talk with me. Oh, how you talk with me. Mm. And oh, how you tell me. I am your You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. 
I wonder, do you really understand the gravity of that? That God knows your name. Out of all the people in the world, he knows your name. God knows you. He knows your name. Yeah. You know my name. Yeah. One more time, I hear you say. You know my name. God, you know my name. You know my name. Yes, yes. I hear him say, I am your own. I am your own. I hear him, God, I'm your own. I am your own. You made me, God. You made me. Ah. I'm here because of you, God. I know you're not going to turn your back on me. I am your own. I am your own. Yeah. Listen, listen. Listen, listen, listen. Listen. Oh, how you walk with me. with me and oh how you tell me that I am your own I need your help I need your help come on say oh how you walk with me Yes, yes, and oh, how you tell me, I am your Listen, listen, and we're going to give God praise and thanks in just a minute. But we have had some situations within this church that involve people with cancer. Not just one or two. But, but the majority of whom have come through it.
Listen, 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 everyone did not make it, but God is in charge of life. But so many have, and we thank God for those who have made it. We pray for the family of those who did not make it. But whether you made it or not, God yet gets the glory. And so, before I speak to you today, I just want us to give God some thanks in the house. Why don't you stand on your feet and give God some thanks in the house? Come on, give him praise. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Hey, hey.
Well, give God the glory. Praise the Lord. One thing about God, he will come into the room He will come into the room where we are, and when he comes into the room, he comes to bless. Now, he comes into the room to bless. So, this is where we are. If before the praise, you had something you needed God to do, Now, since the praise and after the praise, I want you to thank God for doing for you what you wanted him to do. Come on, give him praise. God is, God is so good. You may be seated if you can. You may be seated if you can. Amen. I want to I want to share with you today briefly a word. This is the season where many people are excited. They say it's the season to be jolly and to be merry. And rightfully so because this is the month that we celebrate the birth of Jesus. As I say so often, if he were not born in December, that matters not. What matters is that he was born, we're just celebrating in December. Amen. Some people, when I'm looking to my right, I'm not calling any name, but they celebrate the whole month of their birthday. They were born one day, but they celebrate the whole month. If they can celebrate the whole month, then we can celebrate Jesus' birthday when we desire. Amen. So let's don't get caught up in what day he was actually born. The fact is, he was born and he's alive today. The Word of God is from the book of St. John 3.16. It is the pivotal book and verse in the Bible, particularly in the New Testament. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I want to stop right there. God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? Since he loved the world so, he gave his only begotten son. When we look at it, and I want to deal with this word love for a moment, because it is extremely important that we understand love and the word in its comprehensiveness, love. 
There is no other word in the human language that is as strong as the word love. When we think of love, even if we absent ourselves from the thought of God in it, it brings about something particular, spectacular, something that's meaningful, something that is precious, something that is endearing when we say love. But when you include God in it, then you understand that God is love. And everything that expresses itself in semblance to love comes from God. So whatever you are and whatever you claim to be as it relates to love, that which you claim is a derivative of the godly love. Yes. We, we use the word terminology, agape, phileo, amorous. We use all of those. And, and it's good to do that. But God so love that he gave. When we love, we give. Everybody who gives may not love, but everybody who loves gives. Without a question, you cannot have love in your heart, love in your mind, and not be a giver. You have to release from yourself to others when you love. There's something about love and its characteristics that will cause you to look beyond yourself. And you will see someone else because of the expansion of love. Love is not a term. Love is not an emotion. Love is not a spirit that is supposed to be contained. You don't corral love. You don't diminish love. As a matter of fact, the love that God had for us cannot be measured and defined in human thought. There is, there, no one can express unto you what the true meaning of love is. The only way that you can, can come to a resolve as to it and its importance is by saying God is love. But when it comes to the measurement of what love is for people, it is very difficult for you to express it, for each of us think of it differently. God so loved the world that he gave. I want to know why is it that we love so but we don't give? We don't give like he does. He gives patience. He gives mercy. He gives peace. He gives deliverance. He gives wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He's constantly giving of himself. He gives to us his anointing. His power, constantly, God is giving. If you go into the book of Genesis and work your way through 
to Revelation, you will find inclusive of the book of laws, God giving. If we have the love that God has and that he has given to us, it seems to me that we would not wait until what we call Christmas time before we give. But every day of our lives, we ought to be finding a way that we can give of ourselves because that's how we express our love. God so loved the world. He didn't so love the world that he just gave the moon and the stars, the planets, the mountains, the oceans, the rivers, the streams. When he made all those things, he said it was good. But then he made man. He said that was good. But man moved into a position wherein he displeased the Lord. And those who he chose through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob started to worship idol gods and turn their back on the Lord. But in the midst of their turning and absenting themselves from praising the God of the Bible, God, because of his love, took a heaven that was shut up and opened it again to mankind and said to mankind, because of the remnant, not the whole nation, not the whole world, but because of a few who cried out to him day and night, he decided that he would allow his love to flow from heaven to earth. And he loved the earth so that he did not send Gabriel or any of the other angels down. He gave the world his only his only. He couldn't find anything or any one who could equal his only. His only begotten son. It is really something when you're willing to give your very best to a people who don't deserve it. When you're willing to give of your all when people don't deserve it. This earth did not deserve the gift. There is nothing about this earth that would cause him to have to do it. Because the earth did not deserve it. But let me tell you what did. What caused him to do it was the fact that he made mankind and promised, oh, in the book of beginnings that he would defeat the enemy so that his, the seed of the woman, which means Jesus, would be able to come and bring reconciliation. So it was his intent in Genesis to send his son. And he came to that resolve before darkness covered the mindset of mankind. Before man became so sinful, 
he had, God had already decided that he would send his son. Somebody's going to hear me. No, the son was not yet here in the flesh, but he was the word in heaven. But he sent his only, watch, his only begotten. That same power that caused mankind to come into existence through Adam was the same power and anointing that moved into the womb of Mary and caused Mary to have a son, not begotten of man, but begotten of God. And this son of value, this son of purpose, this son of love, this son of dedication, this son of consecration, this son of determination, this son, the only begotten, came to this earth, the word of God personified for all of mankind because God so loved you. He so loved you. He so loved you that he was willing to give of himself. Ooh. Willing to give of himself. Gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Let me tell you something. When you love, it brings about a sensitivity to belief. Whosoever believeth in him, believeth in the son who's begotten. If you believe in the son who's begotten, you automatically believe in the God who gave. And so the God who gave his son, he didn't give his son for him to receive plaudits. He gave his son for those who would believe to live. In other words, his son was going to die so that mankind would live. The gift that God gave back then was life. Oh, somebody's going to hear this. He gave life. You are living today free from the bondage of sin because God gave his son. You are in the midst of sin. Sinful nature is a part of you, but you're not bound to sin. You are free from sin. Sin all around you. Sin in your house. You even have sin in your body. Sin in your mental processes. Sin is evident, but you're free from it. You're free from it because God gave his son. And his son, this is not, this is not Resurrection Sunday, but his son went to the cross and died on the cross as your substitute. Yes. He was your substitute on the cross. He became sin for you. Though he did no sin, and neither was deceit found in his mouth. Today, old folk, the more chronologically mature folk, young folk, like this congregation, he gave his life for all of us that we might be free. If you are enjoying life today, 
You owe it to God the praise because God made it possible for you to enjoy life. If you, if you can do, and you can do, if you can do all that, you owe it to God. I said you owe it to God. I, I, I'm telling you, whatever you, what, whatever you are able to do, you owe it to God. It may not be all right with everybody else, but whatever you can do, however you act, you owe it to God because God made it possible. If you have it going on, you owe that to God. <laughs> if you're as cute as Snoop, you owe that to God. You really do. You didn't have anything to do with it. All you know, you were here. One day you looked in the mirror and saw yourself. If you were fine as wine, you owe that to God. If you're built like nobody else is built, you owe that to God. If you have it going on, you owe that to God. God so loved us that he allowed you to be born in a world of confusion, of calamity, and he's allowed you to be here and you have a reason today to give him praise because there's something about it. Now, I, I have some preachers behind me and I have some preachers in front of me. <laughs> and they're and they trying to take me to the other side. But uh, let, let, let me stay here for a while. Let me just stay right here for, for, for a minute or two. And we may ride that wave, but right now we're going to stay in shallow water. <laughs> So whosoever, whosoever, now watch, watch, watch. It is important that we understand that whosoever is inclusive. Whosoever. That believeth. So it makes no difference who you are if you believe. Are you still there? We've got to learn how to believe in the Lord. Whosoever believes in him should not. Now, here comes, here comes an interesting thought. You should not perish. But it doesn't mean that you won't. Because you can believe and then walk away. Some people don't believe in that. But you can walk away. That's the whole story about uh, the lamps and the virgins that had oil in the lamps. And they ran out. You can run out. Yeah, you can. Oh. Yeah. But should not. You should not. In other words, everything you need to have for you through his love is there for you to keep you from perishing. God is interested in us not perishing. He's interested in us making it all the way through. And you should not perish, you should not die, but have everlasting life. And if you believe that everlasting life starts at the time of your belief. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, for he did not send him into the world to condemn it. but that the world through him might be saved. Ooh. And I feel it. I feel it right now. Because one day he saved me. I was just a youngster when he saved me. 
I was just a youngster when he sanctified me. I was just a youngster when he filled me with the Holy Ghost. Now, the real problem with me today is that there are those of you who feel that once you get saved and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, that there will not be any more problems that are going to come your way. But I want to tell you today that after I got saved, after I was filled with the Holy Ghost, after I was singing in the choir, and after I was called as a youngster in the ministry, I had some things in my life that were not necessarily consistent with the will and the word of God. And thoughts that came in my mind were not always righteous thoughts. Things that came to me were not always clear. And sometimes I saw some things that I wanted to do. And sometimes the things that I wanted to do, I did not do. But on the other hand, there were some times when I saw some things that I should not have done and I did those. But I want you to know today that I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. I have not always been where I should have been, but thank God today I'm in him, and thank God he loves me today. Now, you can sit there on me if you want to, but I know that there are those of you in here who have problems and struggles, and when you have problems and struggles, that's just what they are. When you're trying to do the things that you know that are right, and you're unable to do all the time the things that you know that are right. But the God that we serve is there to help us through all of our dilemma so that we can represent him. If you believe on him, he didn't come to condemn you, but he came so that through him you might be saved. The only way you're going to be saved is through Jesus Christ and not on your own. That's the reason why I didn't want to get off into the preaching because I, I know I need to say that. This is Christmas time. And the gift that you have is a gift of life. And there are things that you go through. You're going through some stuff. I, I, you know, you know, when you get to be 75 and 80 and 90, nobody has to come to you and teach you a strong message about uh, sex. Don't look at me funny. I'm just saying, you don't have to teach that. But when you're in your teens and then your 20s and 30s and 40s and so forth, you know, I mean, that's, that's where in lies the area. And so some of you all are looking at me right now, but, but I'm telling you, we have some problems. But I want you all to know that God will bring you through them. He'll bring you through those. There are those who are, when you're young, your economics and what you do with your personal money and stuff, you don't always make the right decisions. But I want to tell you this, God will help you through that too. Job opportunity, when you know you deserve to have a certain job, but you can't get it, I want you to know he'll help you through that too. When you got these peers who people don't, Act, they act like they're your friends, but put all your stuff out there in the street and whatever. I want you to know he'll help you through that too. Yeah. When people who are supposed to be your friends, you haven't done anything to them, no harm, no wrong, nothing like that. But then they stop running with you because of whatever. I want you to know he'll help you through that too. I want you to know that when you're married and you are young in your marriage and the two of you don't seem to be making it too well because of that, I want you to know he'll help you through that too. God, listen to me. God so loved the world uh -huh, that he gave his only begotten son to help you through whatever the dilemma that you're going through and whatever cross you are bearing. That's the kind of God that we serve. And I just didn't want to hoop it. 
I did not want to tune it. I just wanted to say it. Because I want you to know that God loves you. He loves you enough to give you protection. He loves you enough to give you deliverance. He loves you enough to give you mercy. He loves you enough to give you peace. He loves you enough to understand where you are. He loves you enough to reach out to you irrespective and say, I see you, I know you, but I still love you. And I praise him because of the gift that he's given for us this day. Now, I close with this. Yes, I need to. I close with this. We need to say to God, since you love me so, and since you give me so much, I'm going to take your spirit and I'm going to give back. Somebody needs a smile. Somebody does need a pat on the back. Somebody needs a kind word. Somebody needs attention. And then others need money. But the question is, what are you willing to give of yourself? God gave his all. What are you willing to give? If you love, there's no extent to which you would give. If you really love. The question is, do you have? Do you have the energy to help somebody? Do you have the money to help somebody? If you don't have, you can't do it. But if God has blessed you with it and you love, nobody has to beg it, pull it, take it, hold you up to get it. You just do it because of that. I'm finished. God, listen to this. God sent his son. Watch this. He loved the world that he gave, but he was the one who sent him. God sent him. Without God, he could not have come. God sent you. He saved and sanctified you, filled you with the Holy Ghost. He has sent you to the world. Now the question is, what are you willing to give? And to that end, we give God praise and we give him glory. They shall have everlasting if you're in the house today and Jesus is not your Lord you have not given your heart to him But you understand the magnitude of God's love? Perhaps you can bring yourself to the point of saying, God, I appreciate you giving your only begotten son. Now today I'll give you my heart. If you're in here today, you want to give your heart to the Lord, just raise your hand wherever you may be in the sanctuary. I want to give you my heart today, God. I'm here today, but I want to give you my heart. If you're here today.
If you're here today and you've given your heart to God, but you say, Brother Maynard, I'd like to become a part of this ministry, I want to be a part of this church, just raise your hand wherever you may be. Say, I'm here and I want to be a part of this church. Still God bless you. You may be seated. We're going to worship the Lord in the ministry of giving. 